All right, so I watched a new 2024, um, like, biopic, I guess is what we'll call this, uh, on Ted Bundy. Um, this is called The Black Mass, and uh, yeah, we follow the events of Ted Bundy attacking the girls in the college dormitory in um, Florida. And uh, so, hmm... This is an interesting one. Um, I never really know how I feel exactly about these, like, retellings like this of serial killers and the events laid out, kind of like how they happened. Um, it just depends on how it's done, I guess. That's always what it comes down to. Is it done tastefully in a way that isn't insulting to the memory of these people? Because these people still have family members alive. And even if they didn't, uh, you shouldn't, um, you know, uh, dishonor their memory. Um, but I think the attempt here is to try to be as respectful as possible. But I actually... I, so I do get that. And I do want to say that I, I don't think this was meant to be disrespectful at all. But it didn't work for me. So this is like a very voyeuristic film that isn't really told through a character exactly. Like we follow Bundy around, but we're not like he's not following along with us if that makes any sense we're we're in like third person but like a, a bit disconnected from him he doesn't feel like much of a character in this as the girls don't either we feel like a fly on the wall in this movie and so we kind of like he's just like sitting in his car and he's like watching the girls and we're like kind of at a distance uh, not super far away or anything but it just it doesn't it as i said it feels more like a dramatization that is that is told from the from a much more outside voyeuristic perspective which i thought was an interesting approach and i think that's why you know i'm saying that this was the attempt to try to make it very respectful and more factual um, and, and not to be done for, for entertainment purposes, but, but more of a re reaccounting of the events, um, but with some artistic flair to it. The reason I didn't like it that much, and in the end, I didn't hate it, but I, I didn't, I didn't particularly like it either. And the thing that bugged me about the film is that the choice to not make any of the girls characters, they they felt like 70s caricatures. Caricatures. I always have a problem with that word for some reason. Caricatures. Whatever. So, um, I was talking to my, my buddy Alex from Beyond the Void, who had seen this movie, and we were texting a little bit during it, because I was telling him I was watching it, and he's like, oh yeah, I saw it. And, um... I was like, you know, the girls in this feel like they're characters because you get them from a distance. And so they're just kind of having these like interactions, but it's like trying to be very groovy, very 70s. Um, but it ends, it ends up kind of feeling like you're watching like a porno movie. These They feel like 70s porno characters because they're kind of like they're they're like NPCs. They don't. They don't really have any personality. You know when you watch the movie like The Final Girls where the characters are very one-dimensional and they just kind of like say random shit and, and it's just supposed to be like a day in the life um, and it, there's there's no substance, there's no personality to the anything they're saying. They're just kind of like representations of... Or like the scene in Jason Jason X when, when they put up the simulation and it's like, you know... I love smoking pot and having premarital sex. Like that's supposed to be like a, a snapshot of, of what our representation of like girls in the eighties were or some shit like that. But it's of course not accurate at all 
people are actually, you know, have personality and, and depth to them and, you know, as they always have. So the characters feel so flat and f like fake. And I, I hated that aspect of it because these are real people that they are imitating, right? As to where, like, if you watch uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is not portraying the events accurately, we're following Sharon Tate around um, before her untimely death. Um, we do make her a character that feels very lively and, and uh, you know, um, relatable and you fall in love with her. And I don't think that dishonors her at all by making her a character. Um, and then they even like alter the events. They completely change how things happen. And I also don't think that that dishonors her because it, it makes her feel like a, like a, a real soul. And like, I think that, I, I guess I just figured it out. That's what I don't like about it. This doesn't make it feel as tragic, right? So that, there we go. I figured it out as I was doing the review. That's what I don't like about the movie is when you have these characters, I, 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 as I said, I think it's done in an attempt to be like, I don't want to, I don't want to like dishonor their name by, you know, putting a fake character around who they were. So I'm kind of just kind of have them be like background seventies characters, but these, you know, I don't, I don't care about them as much as I should. Right. So if you, if you build them up as real people, then it adds to the tragedy. It's like shit, even though what I know of it, these, this is terrible. These are terrible events. And I, I know as a person, but when I'm watching it, if I connect with that person, it makes it feel authentically tragic, um, as as it was. So, and then same thing with uh, with with uh, Ted Bundy here. Um, we don't, I don't know, we don't really get much out of him. We 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 we're so disconnected from him that it's just kind of like you're you're. It sounds like someone's explaining. Like they they know the details vaguely, right? So if like if you were to ask someone like, "What Ted Bundy do?" and they knew the story okay, like they were like, "Well, he was a guy in the seventies who um, you know got arrested for this, and then um, he broke out, and then he went and he 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 met, uh, went to this sorority, and he he attacked these these girls in their bedrooms at night." And then someone was like trying to put that to screen off of what they were being told. That's what this film feels like. It feels like kind of a basic recounting of events. And I, and I don't know, that's just, to me, that's, that's not, that's not doing this justice, right? As to where like with the, the Jeffrey Dahmer show on Netflix, we really get to know these characters, especially that guy that he like starts dating. Oh my God. When he ends up killing him and we get to find out like that he, sh that he almost got away. He was going to let him go. And then like, he forgot his keys or something. So like when he comes back in and he like, he was, it, Oh, it's so tragic. And you, and you care so much and you, you ended up, you end up like by extension, caring about that person even more because you know they're real right because you know something like that happened you know this isn't the exact retelling because you know no one was there but jeffrey dahmer and, and them and, and both of them are dead now so you don't know for sure but this way of telling this did not work for me at all it did not work for me at all when i watched the dahmer thing on netflix i felt very connected because i really got to know uh, Dahmer. Now, this is a, a, a version of Dahmer. Who knows what he was really, really like. And then I got to know uh, the, the people that he killed, and I felt very connected, and it made it feel even more tragic because I felt like I got to know those people. Um, so this, this kind of portrayal of it for me, no. So that's it. I'm reiterating and repeating myself now. It's just becoming uh, repetitive. But uh, yeah, and all the performances to me, they just feel very 
silly. There is one scene with a girl in a bathroom, and it's kind of like a fantasy sequence where you get to see inside the head of, of uh, Ted Bundy. And um, I thought that that was visually very interesting, and at least it was adding something. Because like the rest of the film just felt so whatever to me. But that one right there um, felt like something unique. Felt like something was happening. Felt something artistic. Felt like something. So uh, this is a pass for me for sure. But um, yeah, there you go. Um, but I, I'm, I'm on the fence. I, as I said, it has to... These are very tricky stories to do. When it comes to real life murders you have it's a fine line it can it absolutely can be done obviously you can do a version of it like based on it to a degree right like texas chainsaw massacre uh psycho uh you know silence of the lambs these are all based on ed gein and they're all totally different films so you you can do it in that way or you can do a, a, a real account, you know, and we already did this, obviously, with uh, Incredibly Wicked, Vile, whatever the hell the title is with Zac Efron. Um, so that's the, that's the Ted Bundy movie that you should definitely watch because we get way more into the character of Ted Bundy as to where with this one. We don't get into any character at all. And to disconnect from the characters is like, I don't know, that's the whole point of a movie like this to me. So they, like, missed the point. Anyway, that's that. Uh, let me know. All right.